Hi, my name is Josh Zander. I'm the teaching professional here at Stanford University Golf Course and host teaching professional for My Smart Golf. Today I want to talk about the nine shots in golf. When it comes to ball striking, you basically have nine choices. You can hit a straight ball, you can hit a draw, or you can hit a fade, and you can hit a low, medium, or high version of each one of those. I think of it as playing tic-tac-toe. If you get your nine boxes in tic-tac-toe, the upper left-hand box would be my high draw, the lower right-hand box would be my low fade, and the center square would be a medium trajectory straight ball. So when you get to the golf course and you're looking at your shot, you're going to go through your pre-shot routine and you're going to gather all your information. What's my yardage? Is it uphill? Is it downhill? What's the wind conditions? Throw up your grass. You know, you may want to pay attention to the altitude because the ball goes farther and higher altitudes. You're gathering all this information. You're looking to see where on the green the pin is. Is it on the left side, which would favor a little draw? Is it on the right side, which would favor a little fade? Is it in the front of the green where it's better to bring it in high and stop it? Is it in the back of the green where you'd like to bring it in low and have it run a little bit? You're looking at all of this information and then you're basically picking one of those nine shots. So if you decide, hey, I got to hit this low draw in here based on all this information, at that point, you don't have to worry about the bunkers or the water hazards or where the pin is at that point. You've already taken into account all that information and you've come up with the shot. Now, everything you need to think about during your swing and as you're rehearsing your swing needs to be based on what it takes to hit that particular shot. So if you decide you're going to hit a low draw, any mechanical thought you have in your swing needs to relate to hitting a low draw. So playing the ball back in your stance, closing the club face a little bit, swinging a little bit shallower, all the things that it takes to hit the low draw is what you need to be thinking about. Any other mechanical thought is extraneous and does not belong in this situation. Earlier this year I heard Davis Love was quoted as saying that he was trying to make his putting stroke rehearsal, the practice strokes he was making, relate to the putt that he was going to hit. And I think that's great advice for anybody and not just in putting. Anything you do before you swing needs to relate to the shot you're going to hit. So I've got a shot here in front of me. I've got a little bit of tree trouble so I have to hit the ball with a little right to left spin. There's a little bit of wind in my face so I've got to hit a little low. So I've decided everything I'm going to do here leads me to think I've got to hit one of those low draws. So if you think about that tic-tac-toe, I'm trying to hit it into that low left hand corner. So I've got a six iron here in my hand. I'm going to play it a little bit back in my stance. I'm going to aim my body to the right so I avoid this tree, close the club face down a little bit, and I'm going to make a three-quarter abbreviated swing. So as I'm rehearsing this, I'm feeling the shot. Nobody's better at this than Tiger Woods. He doesn't even necessarily make real practice swings where he's hitting the ground and he, he's just trying to get himself a feel. So if he's trying to hit that low draw, you might see him just kind of going like this. And if I'm watching TV, I'm thinking I already know what shot he's got planned. And if he starts making swings like this, I know that he's looking to hit a high shot. And as he's making swings like this, I know he's looking to hit a low shot. So again, I got a low draw in front of me. I'm making my shallow practice swings with the feel of the club face closing. Tic-tac-toe, lower left hand square, here we go. Nice draw right around the tree, right in the heart of the green. The other thing I like about understanding these nine shots is that it helps you troubleshoot your swing. So let's say you're stuck hitting a bunch of high fades and that's, and that's kind of your nemesis. Boy, every time I get up there I just hit this kind of wipe across the ball, club face open, high fade. How do I hit a straight shot? Well, go to your PGA professional and ask them, how do I hit a low draw? Okay, think about it. You got the high fade upper right hand square. We're trying to figure out how to hit that medium trajectory straight ball. If you learn how to hit the low draw, guess what? Somewhere in between on that path to hitting the low draw is going to be that straight ball. And you're going to start to feel that club face closing. You're going to start to feel that swing shallowing. And on your route to get to that low draw, you're going to start hitting some straight ones. And that is golden. The feel of hitting that straight ball 
even though you know that you're feeling the club face closing and the swing shallowing a little bit, that's what you need to feel when you're trying to hit it straight. Nobody else in the, in the group that you're playing with needs to know that when you hit a straight ball, you're actually feeling a low draw. The other nice thing that happens as you go through this process is that you figure out what your go-to shot is, which shot you're the best at. I had the opportunity when Tiger was a sophomore here at Stanford, I had a chance to play with him and I asked him, if you're under serious pressure and you're on a par four and you need to get the ball in play, what's your go-to shot? And he said, Stinger 2-iron, two 260 yards. And I was like, whoa, with a little bit of a fade. Guess what? I've now watched him since he's been in college. And boy, every time he needs to get a ball in play, he hits that low stinger, whether it's with a low iron or a three wood. And if he ever learns how to do that with a driver, everybody's really in trouble. So what you'll find as you go through this process of learning how to hit these nine shots is that you're going to be really good at one of them. And that's your go-to shot. That's your bread and butter shot. For Nicholas, it was a high fade. For Tiger, it's a low fade. For Tom Lehman, it's a draw. He draws everything. So find out which one's the best for you and stick to that shot. Okay? All things being equal, if there's no particular situation on the golf course that makes you hit a certain ball flight, go to your go-to shot. And then learn how to hit all nine of them so when you are in the situation where you've got to move the ball around, you've got that in your arsenal.